Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the user interface, but realistically, we're just going to jump in and start doing stuff. We're going to start adding geometry, we're going to start adding lights, because I already made this video once and it was basically just, what does all these little buttons do? And as a beginner, I think it's not as helpful as just jumping in and adding things that you might actually be doing. So before we get started, make sure to watch the other videos that came before this. And I set up this default project so that when we do file new, it will create a new project. And to start rendering, all you have to do is click on the render target. And you should have this as your setup if you're following along. If you've used other programs like Blender, or Cinema 4D, then a lot of this sort of looks familiar. Up here you have your 3D viewport and you can look around and you can do lots of stuff in the 3D viewport. On your left you have your scene outline. So here you can click on things, you can open up things, you can right click and you can do a lot of different things but one of the helpful things is you can do show in graph editor and it will bring up that thing in your graph editor. Over here on your right you have the node inspector so depending on what node you have selected you have different options for controlling things over here. And then at the bottom here we have our node graph editor and this is really what's kind of unique to Octane and, and it takes a little bit of time to get familiar with this and try to figure out what's going to work best for you. So you might be intimidated at first but just give it some time, it'll grow on you. There's lots of little buttons everywhere, you can customize these things if you go in here you can go down to customize toolbar and you can customize this. But for now, I wouldn't customize anything until you get really familiar with, with Octane Standalone. If for no other reason, then that you can follow along with these tutorials. You can click and drag these windows out. So I can, I can see if I pull this top window out, I can move it over and I can do, I can put it up here. Um, you can always go to Window Reset Workspace to get back to where it was. You can save different workspaces, that sort of thing. A lot of that stuff is similar to any other program, so I don't think we need to talk too much about that. So let's go ahead and jump in and start adding some geometry here. So, so we have this cube and we could duplicate this in a few different ways. One, we could just grab these nodes and we can control C, control V and make a copy of it this way. And we can add, we can click on our geometry group here. We can add an input. Let's go ahead and add a few inputs. And then I can drag this cube in and I can click on this cube. I can click on this move button. I can move this guy around, okay. So this is a duplicate of this. You can see, even though these material are the exact same, it's not referencing the same material. Now you could, you could do that. Um, if you wanna get rid of a, a node here, you can click on it here to drag it off. You can also hold down control and then left click and then you can cut any number of nodes off. Let me go ahead and undo that. So you could just say, hey, I want a, two unique cubes, but I want them to share the same material. So that's the way you would do that. The other thing you could do is you could instance this cube. Right now, if you look here, we have two meshes. If I click on this bar, it tells me we have 24 triangles and two meshes. So to instance a primitive in Octane, what you do is you do it through the placement node. If I press space bar, I can get this search bar and I can say, look for placement. And I can add this placement node into here. And by default, it does. there's nothing there, but you can see now I can actually move the placement instead of moving the cube. I can move the cube as well here. But what I suggest is keeping the cube actually at zero, 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 and then moving your placement. Especially if you're going to instance the object and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So now, instead of having two different cubes, what I can do, again, 24 triangles and two meshes. If I delete this cube, now you can see we have 12 triangles in one mesh. I can just make a new placement node, copy paste, and then I can drag this into here. And let me just move this out. And so we have the same result, but if you look here, we only have 12 triangles. So we have two meshes, but we only have 12 triangles. So this is the way that you instance objects in Octane. And now you can do a few things. If you want to scale just this one cube, you scale the placement, okay? If you want to scale both, you can scale the object itself. Okay, let's go ahead and instance this one more time. Now I'll move this back to the back. Okay, so now let's get started with lights. I'm going to disconnect this daylight environment. Right now we have no lights in our scene. 
So first let's look at environments. So if I right click here, <clears throat> you can go up to environments. You can see we have three different environments. Texture environment would be for HDRIs. I'll show that in another video. Planetary environment and daylight environment. These two are very similar, but planetary environment has one extra thing, which is altitude. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this plane for a second. And right now, this is what the environment looks like. If I go over here to altitude, and let's put this up to 10,000, you can see now we have a very different look. And then if we keep going up, let's go to 100,000, you can now see we have like a planet, like Earth underneath us. And you can keep going. And you have the Earth under there. So planetary environment can be very cool and very helpful uh, in certain circumstances. Typically, I'm using a daylight environment. So if I click in daylight environment, this is the default settings. You can click on this map here to change the latitude and longitude. So I'm in Los Angeles, I can put it here. The GMT offset, I believe is negative eight. And then I could just set it based on the time in LA if I wanted to. So at 520 on, what's the date today? It's uh, March, March 2nd. So this is cool. Um, sky turbidity, let's go back up to local time. Let's just change this to the day sometime. So this option will make your light softer. So if we just keep going up, it'll make our lights and our shadows much, much softer. And you have a lot of settings here. Definitely feel free to play around with this. In this video, we're just gonna move on to the next set of lights. So lights in Octane, if I press right click, I can go up to lights and you can see we have quad, sphere, and volumetric light. If we go ahead, let's just go ahead and click on quad light. Now you can see it's a purple node, which means it's actually a mesh. So this is actually a mesh. So we have to bring it in as if it's a, a 3D object. And if I bring this up, you can see the actual shape of it. I'm gonna go ahead and hold control and left click to get rid of the daylight environment. Right now, this quad light is very dim. So let's look over here. If we select the quad light, you can see we have lots of options here to choose from. And if you look under the material, so let me go ahead and collapse all these. So look under material, and then you look down here to emission, and then this is where you can change the power, okay? So one thing you could do is actually expand stuff from a node. So in this case, if I right click on this node, I can expand items and it'll expand everything here. And I can also right click on the same one and do collapse items and it'll collapse it back down to our geometry group. See now this group has a, a solid mark for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand. So we have that quad light back. And you can do this a few different ways. You can go right click, expand, diffuse material, right click, expand, but you can see that material has a lot of stuff. And I maybe I don't want all of these things right now. So there's different ways you can do this. So you can, um, let's say we only want the texture emission, right? That's the one that we want to keep expanded and everything else we want to collapse. So I can now just drag over these, right click, collapse. And now I have access to the texture emission. So if I click on texture emission, I can now change the power here. Uh, the other way to do this, if I just go ahead and let me right click, collapse, is if you go to your scene outliner, you can expand here, you can come down to emission, and you can right click, expand. So that's one way you can do it. And lastly, you can do it from the node inspector. So if you're on diffuse material and you you go down all the settings and you realize, you know what, I want to have access to emission, you can right click and do expand. So lots of different ways you can do it, but this is how I typically work. I will expose the things that I want to change and I'll keep everything else in the material itself. So now we have the texture emission here and we can click on this quad light and the quad light we can change, so we can rotate it here, but just like our geometry, you're probably better off using a placement node. So if I press space, type in placement, I can drag that into here, and I can drag the placement node into here, and then I can just move this placement node, and then if I rotate, you'll see it a little better. You can see our quad light is up here, and our placement node, the origin is down here. 
So to fix that, if I click on our quad light and go to the very bottom, we have our transformation values here. So I can just set these all to zero. And zero, zero, zero. And now if I move the placement node, it's centered in our quad light. So this is typically how I am working because I might also want to instance this light. So I can do that by just doing the same way we did it with our mesh and create a placement node, move it over, and now it's instancing this quad light. And now if I change the power of one, it affects both, okay? So I don't need these things, I don't need these things. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and collapse those. And we'll go ahead and leave both of those up for now. I'm going to rotate this. So I'm gonna to go to these, uh, these tools right here, can move, rotate, and scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to rotate. <clears throat> and I'm gonna rotate this one and I'm going to rotate this one as well. And I'll just move them a little bit further out. If I press O, I can select objects. So I actually can't select this placement node from the 3D viewport as far as I know. So if you need to find it, so you have a big node graph, you can you can select O for the to select the object. Click on the object. You can right click on the node inspector and show in graph editor and now it'll show you quad light and then you can change your position here so if i press right click go back up to lights and let's select sphere light the same thing i'm going to press space search for placement Put placement over here and then i'm going to bring our sphere light up I'm going to click on the sphere light. I'm going to go to emission, right click, expand. So now with this texture emission, I can bring up the brightness here. And let's go ahead and bring this over here, just so we have some different lights here. So this is not necessarily something that's specific to Octane, but Lighting in general, the size of the light makes a big difference on the quality of the light. I'm actually going to hide our sphere light for a minute. And let's go ahead and get rid of that one as well. And let's just look at this one quad light. So if I take this quad light and I scale it up. So again, I can use this button here to scale. If I click the middle, it'll scale everything. So let me scale it way up. And then I'm going to bring it, I'm going to drag it up as well. You can see that the shadows are a lot softer here. And I might want to take my value down, right? But this, but in general, the shadows are much, much softer. And if I want to get sharp shadows, I do the opposite. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to make this guy much smaller. Bring him closer. So now that I've made them really small, I need to bring the power back up. Let's click on texture emission. And now you can see our, sh our shadows are much sharper. So that's something to keep in mind as you build your lighting, that the size of the light does matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that for now. We'll come back to our sphere light. And the same principle applies to the sphere light. If I scale this down, the shadows get harder. <clears throat> if I scale it up, the shadows get softer. So I might want to have a soft light. And to do that, what I might do is bring this up, scale it bigger. and then adjust the power. Now, if you don't want to see this big sphere in your, in your shot, there's a few things you can do. I'm going to make this plane a little bit more reflective. So 
So right now you can see that this light is being reflected from this surface. If we don't want that, you need to get what you need to do is go into texture emission and then uncheck visible on specular. So now it's lighting our objects, but we don't see it in the reflection. And the other thing you might want to do is if you click on sphere light under camera visibility, you can turn that off. So if you don't want to see your light, you can turn camera visibility off. You probably want to uncheck shadow visibility and dirt visibility as well. I'm going to leave it on for now. Right click lights, volumetric spotlight. Now this is the coolest thing ever. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to plug this in and you can already see why this volumetric spotlight is cool. But let's go ahead and I'm going to move this over here for a minute and I'm going to click on the volumetric spotlight and there's a lot of things that you can change here, but the very top two are very important. The throw distance, right, which is pretty, pretty obvious. And then the cone width again is also pretty obvious. So let's say we want to incorporate all those cubes just drag it out like that. And then this scattering here is really important. So if I bring this all the way down to black, it becomes just a spotlight, which is very cool. So if you want volume, you'll have to have it set to some value. And then you also have a density slider here. So I can control the density by bringing this up and down. So maybe we want it somewhere in there. And then also under scattering, you can change the color. So if you want it to be slight blue, you can change it to a blue. You can make it purple if you wanted. But this is a very, very useful light. But you should still keep in mind the size of your light, how far the distance is, how wide the, the cone is, because all of these are going to affect the quality of your light. So for instance, let's just grab this placement node and let's bring it higher. Okay, so now let's do the throw distance closer. The cone width is still okay. You can see it's really dark, so how do we make it brighter? If we come down here, we see we have this emission. So we can click on this and now we can change the brightness here. Okay. So now we have this really, really long spotlight. And this is really, really soft. The edge, the ring is, is now very soft. So the other thing I would do with this spotlight is, personally, is I would right click on a mission and I would expand that because I want access to that. I would want access to my throw distance. So I'm going to expand that. Cone width, expand that. Density, expand that, which is actually scattering. And then under scattering, this scattering here, I'll right click expand. Now, if we look here, it doesn't really tell us what these are. They just say float value. So what we can do is rename these. So to rename a node, you click on it and then you click up here in the node inspector and we can just call this throw distance cone width. density and we'll call this scattering color. So now I can visually see what I want to change here. So if I want to change the scattering color, I can just click here, change the color. If I want to change the density, etc. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.